It used to be simple. Sex education in schools was no more than the birds and the bees. But in recent months, things have changed. They were taught oral and anal sex. And a lot of the children are just too traumatised to even talk to their parents. You don't actually know what is being taught to your child anymore. In September 2022, the Department of Education adopted a new curriculum for PSHE lessons that's being taught across the island schools and many parents are not happy about it. I was made aware of it about 10 days ago by um, an elderly gentleman who made an appointment to see me and he explained how he'd had a conversation with his granddaughter and how that had shocked him and he's explained what the conversation had really consisted of. I was also shocked because having been a teacher and had to deliver this type of lessons for children of this age, it was kind of something that I could not really relate to. Eliza Cox, who's a mum of two and vice chairman of Moran Commissioners, has been asked on behalf of several parents to bring this to public light as they fear of a backlash. A lot of the parents I sort of said, OK, we, you've got to go and do something about this, you know, and all of them just went, I'm not raising it, and immediately stood back. Um, and then the inevitable question came, Eliza, will you do this for us? These are our parishioners, these are our children in our parish. And even though we don't have any proper representation to deal with this and stuff like that, we want to be able to support the people that have elected us. And so us as commissioners spoke about this and we feel very strongly that we want to support our parents, our children of our parish, and just ask the government the question of, have you really looked at this properly? He's an MHK, he's a teacher, what does he think? Um, people contacted me and just raised awareness and said, what are your thoughts on this? And yeah, it was basically shock and horror. So it started off with one mum that I ran into, um, whose daughter was very upset because she'd been made to sit with a group of boys, she's 12 years old by the way, that she didn't particularly get on with. Um, and she'd been handed a wooden dildo and told to put a condom on top of it. Parents were totally unaware of the graphic content their children are being taught. No parents were informed about any of this was going to be taught in any of their lessons. So yes, I understand there is the thing where you can pull your children out, uh, that they don't have to be involved in this, they don't have to know any of these things. But if you don't know that this is going to happen... How concerned are you that this has been brought in without any consultation with the parents? I can't see the reason for it because, you know, it's all about transparency. Um, year seven is a time when parents are so eager to find out what their children are doing. Um, there's all the work done in terms of going from year six to year seven, all the transition work, and there's, you know, that recognition that children at that age actually drop back slightly and they need that extra support. So to give them this kind of high-level adult information is really out of touch with what I would be familiar with and what I would expect to happen. So, yeah, it's just, yeah, not what I would expect and it's, you know, something that I will be further asking the Minister about. Gender ideologies have also been included in the classroom discussions and in one school this was led by a drag queen. They were divided into three groups. The first group I'll start with had um, a drag queen come in and the drag queen asked the question, how many genders are there? The children responded dutifully, there's two. The drag queen said, no, there isn't two, there's over 70, there's 73. One 11 year old child got very upset by that and turned around and said, no, there's not, there's only two. The drag queen unfortunately then responded with, you have upset me, get out and threw this child out of the class. What's your view on drag queens being invited into the schools to lecture on gender ideologies? That, that was quite a surprise, especially in terms of what the drag queen was doing. Um, in terms of a drag queen in a certain environment, it might have reason, but in terms of um, a sex education lesson, it did seem quite unusual. And, and that was really the thing that I did raise with the head teacher in terms of I didn't really see this as being appropriate. I, I really wanted to find out what planning had gone in before this had happened. And was there a teacher there at all times to ensure that it was done in a way that was seen as being appropriate? And 
yeah, I'm still waiting for a reply on that. The next group was then taught about sex change operations. They were shown artificial penises and they were then shown a skin graft taken from a girl's arm to use to put onto the artificial penis. The third group, they were taught oral and anal sex and a lot of the children are just too traumatised to even talk to their parents and even when other friends have phoned up saying they just go, I can't talk about it, just not talking about it. So these are 11 year old kids? These are 11 year old children. Year 7. Year 7. Some of the things on the English curriculum are interesting. Um, so there's a whole bit on fisting and basically how to do it safely and with lube and I just stand astounded. There's also fetishes were on that, weren't they? Fetishes were on that as well, yeah. That was there too. And this is again being aimed at year seven? Or is no. this higher no, up no, in no. school? I, what um, age is this being taught to? This isn't being taught, it hasn't said in the document what age that should be taught to. Um, it is basically saying that these things should be talked about in school. The Manx curriculum is based on the Scottish model, which has also faced severe criticism. The new RSE framework has opened the floodgates to a whole host of external providers who offer sex education materials to schools, and now children across the country are being exposed to a plethora of deeply inappropriate, wildly inaccurate, sexually explicit and damaging materials in the name of sex education. Speaking to a Commons Committee on Education, Miriam Cates MP has claimed RSE lessons are contributing to the sexualisation of children. But some RSE lessons are actively contributing to the sexualisation and adultification of children. The Proud Trust has produced a dice game encouraging children to discuss explicit sexual acts based on the role of a dice. The six sides of the dice name different body parts, such as anus, vulva, penis, mouth and objects. Two dice are thrown, and children must name a pleasurable sexual act that can take place between those two body parts. The game is aimed at children of 13 and over. These children are under the age of consent legally, and many would say emotionally as well. How appropriate do you think it is to be discussing acts such as oral and anal sex with 12-year-old children, and also masturbation with children at primary school age? I, I just find it quite horrific, and having been a teacher who has taught this type of lessons historically, um, which was a much milder content and something that a non-specialist could teach, um, I'd find it very difficult to actually go into a group of children and deliver that lesson. Many teachers are also concerned about what they have to teach. Uh, there was one teacher that spoke to me um, and she was very uncomfortable with what she had to do. So bearing in mind she's young, she's pretty, um, she had to go into a group of boys and girls and teach them how to masturbate. And what age are these kids? Twelve. So again, year seven? Yeah. Year seven, year eight? Year seven, year eight. Yeah. She had to go and teach them. And she's uncomfortable doing it. They're uncomfortable doing it. Um, Understandably. And there was another kind of like story that I heard from parents that um, there was one teacher that walked into the classroom and said, right, I have to teach you this. I think it's wrong. I don't think you're ready for it. So I want you to sit there and colour in your books and I'll stand at the front of the class and I will teach this lesson because I have to teach this lesson. But please don't listen to me. I'm feeling, you know, challenged for those teachers in terms of how do they feel? How, you know, as a professional person, if you're teaching geography, and your third lesson is to go into a group of year seven children and teach this material. It's like, yeah, how, is, how are they dealing with this? It must be an incredible challenge. We have asked Julie Edge, the Minister of Education, for an interview. However, she has declined, but she has released this statement. In light of the public comment, the department feels it appropriate to deploy an independent review to gain an independent understanding of what has taken place and the facts of the situation understood. As such, the department has taken the decision to pause all RSE delivery across primary and secondary schools and will be unable to comment any further until the facts have been established. We would ask the public not to speculate any further until such time. So you're aware there's an independent review 
Um, what do you understand about that? Um, that's quite an interesting twist because when the statement came out last Friday afternoon at 20 past four, it made reference to the independent review and how that was going to look at the situation and there was nothing else really. So in terms of the remit, in terms of what was happening there, there are many, many questions and that's really what I'm going to focus on next week in the House of Keys. And I think it's really important that the Minister actually is able to give an explanation of what this involves and what the remit is. The House of Keys will meet on Tuesday when Jason Morehouse will raise this subject. Charlie Murray, Douglas and the Isle of Man.